So welcome those of you who are out there being streamed. Um, so I know some of you, um, most of you I don't know. Um, and we have to uh, find a way, I'm very practical. And I like, um, I like to teach things that, uh, that you can immediately use. So it's a, it's a, it's a situation we'll do our best to, to try to meet those goals. So we will talk about things and then we'll do some demonstrations. On the demonstrations, we'll be able to see things very clearly on the screen. And then we'll do, we'll, shut everything off for a moment and have you come take a closer look but don't come up stay down until after we've we've done stuff so that everybody can see things um and you may see them just as well on on the screen i don't know we'll see how that looks so um i have to figure out a place to go a place to be here um let's uh, here, let me put glasses on so I can see you. So we, um, <clears throat> the subject is, uh, is the treatment of joints and, um, and as somehow or another that topic emerged, I realized that we don't really know that much about joints uh, and that much of what we think of as joint pain is not joint pain, meaning it's not the, it's not the, any of the anatomical articular structures of the joint that are generating the pain. <clears throat> so treatment of joint pain really is the topic of treatment of pain. And the topic of treatment of pain, I know nothing about because I don't believe acupuncture can just make pain go away. So if so, we would all be in hospitals all over the world working, you know, two days a week and, and vacationing in, you know, in plush places the rest of the time because we could just turn off pain gates immediately. And I don't know anybody who can do that. Uh, and I do know people who say they can do it, but I don't know anybody who could do it. And so the, 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 pass, the pathway towards this is to determine what are the pain generators, which tissues are generating the pain. And if you can successfully treat the tissues that are generating the pain, then we now have some way to deal with making the pain go away, you know? So we put needles in and people just are pain free, but it'd be, it'd be helpful to know well, why are they pain free? What did we do to make them pain free? How deep was that needle? Why was that needle that depth? So as we go through this, we'll explore, um, I'll just tell you everything that I can that I know uh, about, um, about making those determinations. So, um, and this is not gonna work here. Um, I know what I'll do. Let's do this. Let's make this my little place to be. There we go. There we go. Uh, I hope I'm not creating problems here. Good. It would help to be able to see the PowerPoint. Okay, so, um, so we, uh, um, let me, um, let me see what happens if I go up here. <coughs> As I said, it's an interesting morning. <clears throat> uh, 
My wife gets really upset with me for all of the uh, faces that I make when I'm not happy. And she says, why don't you just not make those faces? You know, and you know, I just can't help it. And, and uh, I play music, and I'm in a band that every time somebody misses something or, you know, I make these faces, you know, and one day the guitarist said, I really don't like playing with you. You're so negative, you know, <laughs> and I, and, uh, and I, we got through that. Okay. And then the next practice, he says, Oh, I understand you. You make those faces also when you make mistakes, when I make mistakes, you know, so they're not, it, it isn't always, it's not critical of somebody else. It's critical of the situation, myself included. So what is a joint? A joint is where two or more bones attach for the purpose of permitting the body to move. A joint is usually formed of fibrous connective tissue and cartilage. A joint or articulation is a connection made between bones of the body which link the skeletal system into a, into a functional or a systemic whole. Now that's, that's kind of cool. You know, so it puts, it, it, it's all these links that, that put the body together. And if like you look at uh, Tom Meyer's anatomy trains, you see fascia and muscle. And here from, mus from, a, muscular, from a skeletal perspective, you're talking about these, these interconnections of, of, of joints. Now, making the body up the whole. And really part of the problem is if you remember my slide from yesterday of the transition from from early early human to late human, you know, we we uh, haven't really been upright all that long, and we've got joints that that still don't quite. Um, they're just not genetically. They're not engineered for the genetic era that we're in, you know. I don't want to say God made a mistake, but, but maybe they put the wrong parts in. So some of our joints are great and some of them are not so effective. So, um, or, or, or more prone for problems. So, uh, we just want to think about joints just real briefly before we get into the practical stuff. I don't like theory at all. You know, uh, uh, fibrous joint, uh, is joined by 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 dense collagenous collagenous colla, dense rich in collagen tissue. Cartilaginous joint is a little bit different. You can read a synovial joint. Synovial joint is what we're talking about here. So synovial joints are not directly joined, but they have a synovial cavity. So this is what the joints that we're dealing with, this is predominantly the, the joints that we treat. Okay, There's lots of connective tissue, there's lots of articular capsule, there's lots of fascia, there's lots of ligamentous structures holding it all together, all of which are very readily um, 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 respond to the mechanical stimulus of needling and the introduction of electrical stimulation, or if you wish, the introduction to heat uh, with needle top moxet, you know, into those tissues. So, the synovial joints are are most, or really everything that we're going to be discussing. Um, just and for reason here, the fibrous joints are, for instance, the sutures of the of the skull, and so we we. Um, you know, we, there is this tradition, right, of, of, of uh, uh, cranial sacral work and moving, you know, moving those skull bones and all that. And I won't make comment on that of what I think, um, but generally it's thought that these are virtually immovable or have a little bit of movement, but not much movement. So we're not gonna talk about fibrous joints we're going to try to do the easier joints. Cartilaginous joints uh, are the intervertebral discs. I have a, uh, a personal distrust of discs, and as well as a personal dislike of discs. And, and so we're not going to talk about, about the cartilaginous, basically the, the annular ligament of, of the intervertebral disc that holds it all together. We're, we're going to 
we're going to stay away from that one because that could be a whole couple of days in itself. And so then we get to um, synovial joints, which are most common. They're freely movable. They're not directly joined. There's a joint cavity. There's always some sort of joint cavity, which is why these joints swell up, right? They swell up because the fluids swell and they're contained within a cavity. Even the littlest joint, like the sternal clavicular joint right here, it's a, still a synovial joint with a joint capsule. And um, again, they have these accessory ligaments, all of which are just, they love electrical stimulation and they carry electric charges and they respond to mechanical needling, you know, ligament tapping and all of these different techniques. So, um, so, so, you know, hip joint, shoulder joint, knee, ankle, all of these, you know, all of the digits, hands, feet, all these guys are synovial joints. And so it just depends on what kind of synovial joint. Our, our, what we, when we think of a joint, first and foremost, we think of a ball and socket joint, like the shoulder that can go in all these different directions. Uh, but there are hinge joints. There's pivot joints, there's saddle joints, there's plane joints where things just move in, in much more limited fashion, but yet they still are under the category of a uh, synovial joint because they have all the other properties to, to, to make them be considered a synovial joint. So very quickly, the, 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 um, the hip joint is a ball and socket joint and it looks something like that, right? Um, and we always see these illustrations of, of the hip joint that's all cleaned up, but rarely do we see these where, where oh yeah, that's right, this, 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 the acetabulum and the head of the hum uh, femur, all of that, it's all strapped in with all this connective tissue. It's, it's not just this, it's not this, but it's this covered with this whole capsule. So here's a synovial joint, um, uh, um, a, a ball and socket. Here is a hinge, which could be the elbow as a hinge, the knee as a hinge, which is one of the problems with the knee. It's a hinge joint. And so you get hit from the side and you have all kinds of problems. Um, and so uh, we have a condyloid joint, which is, um, which you just see has this little bit of movement in the wrist, you know, as, as it, in this case, as it, as it ulnar and radial deviates. Um, and so um, a pivot joint is between C1 and C2, this joint that goes like this. So it's still an, it's still a disc, but it's not, a, it's, it's not so fibrous as the rest of the discs to allow us to be able to kind of rotate, laterally rotate a little bit here. Uh, and then a saddle joint you'll see in, in, in some of the things like this, thumbs and, and what have you. So um, you can see uh, uh, um, a plane a joint is a gliding joint like the S sacral iliac joints. It, uh, uh, sometimes considered a gliding or a plane joint. It, it moves a little bit like this. So by, by, by understanding the, there's a really good chance I'm going to fall at some point, but we'll, we'll laugh when that happens. Huh? <laughs> so, um, so we have, um, so we have these, uh, we have these we have these different joints that are based upon how they move and there will be situations in treating some of these joints where how they move will give us some guide into how we are going to approach um, the treatment of this however as a synovial joint it may not matter how they move because we're still in a synovial capsule and we don't have a way in. And uh, so let me cut back up here. So um, 
So we, so I mentioned in the beginning pain generators. Okay. The joint capsule may be a pain generator itself. The, the articular ligamentous fascial, you know, all of that, all of that tissue can be a pain generator. The ligaments that stabilize a joint, like the, the ligaments that hold together the sacral iliac joint. There are cases where bone or bone spurs around a joint are, uh, are the, the pain generators. It could be, it could be a, a subacromial bone spur that's, that's, that's irritating a supraspinatus tendon and you, you, you really have a tendon problem and it seems like it's a joint problem. It's, you know, it feels like a shoulder joint problem, but it really isn't in the joint at all. We have tendons at their osseous junction, so tendon to bone junction. We have tendon sheaths and the synovial sheath around the tendon. We have the, say, the supraspinatus tendon that, that acts often like, like shoulder joint pain. Retinaculum, we have uh, around the knee, around the eyes of the knees, you have the retinaculum holding in much of that articular uh, material. Um, muscles. Muscles usually cross a joint, right? They cross the joint so that they can flex it or extend it. So like the biceps have to cross the cubital fossa, have to cross this hinge joint so that when it contracts, it moves it. So the movement is by these muscles that cross the joint. And often the muscles are, are the, some of the biggest contributors to what we think of as joint pain. You know, problems in any of the muscles often generate down toward the tendon of attachment, which is near the joint. And we kind of go, I've got elbow pain, but it's not really inside the synovial capsule in this case, but it's a referral pattern coming from muscles. So much of, much of this whole chase is about, uh, is about looking at, at muscles that generate pain into the joint or act like joint pain when in fact it's all soft tissue generating the pain. And the, the, um, and I was fortunate enough in, in 1983 to study with Janet Travell and we were like the first acupuncture she, she had met and she wasn't even convinced that a dry needle into a muscle could be effective. She would point inject uh, trigger points in muscles. And when asked, you know, well, what do you think? You know, could this, can this happen? And she said, well, I suppose so, you know. And then over time with, her, you know, her meetings with, with uh, um, somebody help me, uh, Tri-State. My brain. Uh, who, who wrote that? Uh, North, North American uh, acupuncture, uh, North American acupuncture, the new American acupuncture who, uh, from Tri-State College. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he, when he met Janet Travell or close to the same time, she started having more contact with acupuncturists and, and, and she started to see that this could be so. This was very late in her career. She was quite old when, when I met her, but it really brought you know, this whole other piece into, into acupuncture of understanding that muscles generate pain as they cross joints and they act like joint pain. And it's, and you've got to know what those pain patterns are and, and where, where to look for them. So, um, muscles, pain referral patterns from other other muscles and other structures, you know, there's a lot of structures that, that just have these weird ways of referring pain. And it often refers pain into a joint. So we've got this huge list of, 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 of structures, of tissues around a joint as we think about how we're going to go about treating joint pain and, and diagnosing it. So this is... This is really, really simple, and um, the, um, the, the joint can, 
palpate so easily if you are able to palpate the joint line, right? So the joint line or the joint space, let's, um, um, what's, what's a good example here? Um, uh, the, we'll get here to the acromial clavicular joint. We have the, the, the joint line here between large intestine 16 and 15. If we palpate along this line and it's painful and it's sore, it's usually indicative that inside that synovial capsule, uh, there is a, um, um, uh, there's a problem or that it's inflamed or something is not working right. And so sometimes like for instance, um, the sacral iliac joint, when you palpate the joint opening, the joint space of the sacral iliac joint, it, it according to some um, of the things, some of the articles I've read, is the most effective way of, uh, of diagnosing if the sacral iliac joint is involved by literally just palpating the, the, the joint line and all of these other tests. I, I gave up on all the other tests people use for sacral iliac joint diagnosis because they, I just thought they were all flawed and they all gave mixed positives and negatives and they would miss a lot of problems. And just palpating is enough to, to come to a clear understanding or diagnosis of, of, the joint, of the joint space and therefore make a diagnosis and leads to wonderful, easy treatment. So palpate the joint line the, when it exists. For instance, there's a little teeny joint line right along the thumb joint here, you know. Every joint, uh, this, the, 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 the joint space is not accessible in every case, but when it is, palpate that if it's painful. Even gallbladder 40, the tarsal sinus, the opening to, into the talar joint and the you know, when that's painful, that tells you the synovial capsule of the ankle is, has got a problem. And so it's so simple. So, um, um, you can palpate the, the, the ligamentous structures. You can palpate the tendons that attach or cross. And, and especially you palpate the muscles that are involved locally around a joint. You know, and as, as you get better, you know which ones tend to, tend to be problem and which ones are not a problem. So, um, so palpation, I mean, th this, I'm trying to put this into our hands, uh, so to speak, uh, in, in, in an easy sense that, that we have, we've been taught palpation, you know, we know how to feel things and, and palpation is a good way to get there rather than making yourself have problems around orthopedic testing if you don't know orthopedic testing. So, but, um, so palpate the joint line. Um, mo movement is the essence of a joint. That's what joints are for is movement. And so that's another thing we can do. We've been taught to observe, right? We, we feel, we touch, we, we listen, right? And that's part of traditional Chinese diagnosis. Well, just observe if the range of motion of that joint is, is, is hyper mobile, is it normal mobility, is it, uh, is it less mobile? And, um, and I think that's a, just a simple, important thing. And then after you do acupuncture, observe it again. And if it's better, then you kind of go, oh, this is nice. This this was this works and what have you. So, and then you can, if you think about, like, say, if you think about this, the big thumb joint here, right? Well, you think that the patient says it's, it's a problem. Well, just common sense would tell you that if you mobilize this joint, if you distract it, if you pull it apart, or if you compress it, if you push it together, it's going to tell you a lot about that synovial capsule. Here, here's a synovial joint at the, at the first metatarsal tarsal joint, right? Uh, first metacarpal carpal joint. Pull it apart. 
push it together. I mean, don't hurt the patient, don't hurt the joint, but just distraction and compression. That's basically what most orthopedic tests are anyway, but it just makes sense, you know? And if that hurts, then the ligaments that are holding it together or the, the, the surfaces that are rubbing together are uneven or could be arthritic when you compress it and move it and it hurts. You can make all kinds of very, very simple um, um, uh, observations. You think we should build a campfire in here? Do <laughs> you think we could ask the hotel to um, whoever, I have no idea who's in charge here, uh, 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 to, to maybe make it not so cold? I mean, I see people in down jackets here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so then here's, here's another piece that I think is, is interesting. I brought this up yesterday. Um, there are there are uh, there are phasic muscles and there are postural muscles phasic muscles are fast twitch and they allow you to to do things right they allow they're they're, they're used as on demand uh, muscles that that uh, um, that, that help us move joints, the phasic muscles move joints, right? And so, the, and the postural muscles are, are slower twitch fibers, and they are used to hold together different parts of the body, like, like the abdominals, to, to, like the, the, the erector group of the spine, to, to hold us up against gravity. And, and, and so the, um, the phasic muscles you would think would be, thank you, uh, the phasic muscles would be um, really what move a joint, but there are some situations where postural muscles are also moving a joint. But, but understanding the two different muscles is interesting because for instance, as I talked about yesterday, the pectoralis minor is a, is a postural muscle that is kind of holding all this stuff up against gravity. But now we have, we have computers and keyboards and all this stuff pulling us forward. We got more anterior, you know, stuff in our face than we've ever had in the history of human beings. And so everything is, is just pulled forward like this. And so this postural muscle it continues to shorten and tighten and, and retract the, the, the shoulder. The phasic muscle, the rhomboid minor, is not a postural muscle. It should be. And if it was built today, the, the rhomboid minor would be a postural muscle. It would be, be holding the shoulder back into retraction. But that wasn't necessary, you know, when these bodies were stamped out of the cook, cookie cutters, right? So, so we, and literally, the, if you're over 30 years, or if you're older than 30, 35 years, that recent has this anterior glop in front of human beings been created, you know? And, and uh, my son is, a, is, a, is an engineer, and he, he, he left Wall, uh, Wall Street. He left uh, Silicon Valley, and he just said, this is crazy. This whole thing is so crazy, I can't participate in this. And so he headed off to different places. He was in Maui with us for some of the time, not in our house, but he was working on organic farms and stuff. But he started assembling all this interesting information. And he's writing a book right now. And one of the chapters is The Delusion of Steve Jobs. And, and he writes about how he worshiped Steve Jobs. He worshiped Apple. He worshiped everything, the, 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 everything that company was doing. And then he looks at the results of what has, have, has happened from that. And he, ta and he calls it the delusion, you know, of, of how it's taken away the soul and the spirit of, of many people's lives, you know, of being present with somebody else in time and space. And, and just 
on a muscle, on a joint level, you know, that has created this enormous um, conflict between a phasic and a postural muscle, you know, and a, and a, and, and a muscle that, that was priorly used to 